This video is sponsored by iFixit. I've already done a teardown on the DualSense controller, the Xbox Series X. I will be doing a teardown on the Xbox Series S, but now it's time to take a look at the PS5 from the inside from a repairability perspective. For this teardown, I'm gonna be using an iFixit Manta Precision Bit Set. I usually use the ProTec Toolkit, but in this one, I'm gonna use this kit because it has this larger driver. This larger driver is great for taking out screws that are a little bit more difficult to get out because it's a little bit bigger and you have a little bit more leverage when you're twisting the driver. And now through the end of the year, iFixit is having an amazing holiday sale. So if you've got a toolkit on your list, now is the time to go to ifixit.com slash tronicsfix to get $10 off your order of $50 or more and pick up all the tools on your list. Now let's get this PS5 torn down. It looks like this top just clips off. There are no screws or anything, so... <laughs> there we go. So these are the clips underneath. You can see they're pointed one way and those clips just fit in to these little grooves right here. Next, we have one screw here and one screw here. And these screws are Security Torx T9. And then I'm assuming the bottom cover comes off the same way. And there we go. And just like that, we're in. So the first thing I want to note is that if you get your disc stuck in the disc drive. This is where the manual eject screw is located. So you will have to remove this top cover and then get a screwdriver down in that hole and twist it until the disc starts coming out. Next, we'll remove this plastic adhesive cover right here. And then we can remove these connectors right here. My pliers are just on that top part, the part that is more white white and less of the cream color. And we'll do the same thing over here. There we go. And the same thing over here. Notice that I'm rocking these back and forth as I pull. Now I know from previous consoles, this screw that has the PlayStation button symbols on it is where the hard drive goes. The PS5 has an expandable storage slot, which is located right there. Now with those parts removed, I'm gonna remove all the screws from the outside of this plastic piece so we can lift it up and away. And of course, Sony has a sticker over one of the screws to make you think that you're gonna void your warranty. And then also you can tell when this sticker has been removed. Just remember that it is not illegal to take one of these apart. You are allowed to do that. And now with all those screws removed, we can remove the fan. And that is a massive fan. This is a 12 volt, 2.15 amp fan. So if at some point you need to clean your console, this will likely need to be cleaned. Next, we need to remove this piece right here. And then we have a screw right here and a screw right here. One of the things I don't like from a repairability perspective is that there are various types of screws and various screw lengths just around this outside piece right here. And then we have four different kind of screws right here. And who knows what else we'll find on the inside. That's always a pain when you're trying to take something apart because then you have to lay them all out and you have to try and remember where they all go instead of having more similarly sized fasteners. Now with that piece removed, we can remove this black piece just like that. And then we get our first look at the disc drive, which is located right here. We just need to unclip this ribbon cable. Then we can remove the disc drive. This disc drive ribbon cable doesn't just pull out. There is actually a little locking tab right here. You just push straight down on, and then this cable will come right out. If you don't push it down on that locking tab, you will likely break these little ears off inside that connector. And then you have to figure out a way to get those ears out. Now with that disconnected, we can lift up the disk drive. Now let's take a closer look at the inside of the disk drive. And all of the little black screws that go around the edge of this disk drive casing are all the same size. Next, we'll remove these four silver screws. Don't forget about this little piece of silver adhesive foil. 
And here's the disk drive on the PS5. Right here is that manual eject screw that I was telling you about. And you can see how it just turns to get a disk out. And here we have the bottom side of the disk drive. The bad news I see here is this little board right here is likely tied to the motherboard by probably this chip, maybe even this chip. Now I can't say for sure, I haven't tried it yet. At some point I may try swapping them to see if I get any errors with the disk drive, but that's what it looks like so far. Now the disk drive on the PS5 is definitely a little odd, especially when you compare it to what they looked like on the PS4 Pro but I can definitely see the design similarities. So obviously they took what they knew from this and designed hopefully a better disc drive for the PS5. Now I'm gonna remove these two screws, these two screws, and this ribbon cable. Then I'll flip up this bottom plate so we can take a look at the inside of the disc drive. So here we have the laser. If your laser ever needs to be cleaned, it'll be a pain to get to it, but you can clean it with something like a lint-free swab and some isopropyl alcohol. The other thing I notice right away is this mechanism right here. With the PS4, sometimes these rollers would come off and it would cause a problem where the disk drive just wouldn't work at all. They're reusing this roller system, but it definitely looks a lot different than on the PS4. This is that same system on the PS4 Pro, and you can see how similar they are. Another thing that happened was these rollers would get kind of gummed up and dirty, and that would make it so the disk would go in very slowly if it went in at all. So if that happens on the PS5, all you need to do is get another swab and some isopropyl alcohol, and then just go along and clean these rollers. Out of curiosity, I'm gonna remove them just to see what they look like. So they are definitely removable and fairly easily replaceable. One other thing I wanted to mention with this disc drive is when you put a disc in, that pushes this arm over here. And as that pushes this arm over here, you can see this arm hits this switch and this switch. And when this arm hits these switches right here, that's what tells the PS5 that there's a disc inside the disc drive. Now let's move on to the rest of the PS5. There's 43 screws holding this metal plate down. That's definitely annoying, but I'm gonna get those all taken out so we can take a look at the motherboard and the power supply. three hours later. Now we just got the Wi-Fi cables, disk drive ribbon cable, and we should be ready for this plate to come off. Okay, we've got a bunch of little thermal pads. Okay, we've got viscous thermal paste, just like they had a lot of on the Xbox series consoles. Got a little heat pipe right here. So here we got the main big clamp that helps keep the APU clamped down to the motherboard. And all of this viscous thermal paste right here lines up with this. And that is what this little extra heat sink is right here. That's what that's for, is to keep all of those chips cool. So just like on the Xbox Series X, Sony is definitely worried about cooling with this. Let's hope they did a good job making sure the whole thing stays cool. So we've got a couple other ribbon cables, a couple other screws in the motherboard, and these two screws on the main clamp. Then we should be able to get the motherboard out. And now time for the motherboard to come out. And here we go. Sony is definitely using liquid metal, which is pretty serious for cooling. They're using all sorts of cooling solutions on this motherboard. So they've got the liquid metal. We've got some big old thermal pads right here. Another thermal pad with a metal plate and thermal paste that is on the actual plate right here. As you can see, Sony's using a lot of liquid metal on the PS5 and you can see they've taken precautions to cover the entire chip 
so none of the liquid metal gets on anything other than the main APU. So the upside to liquid metal is that it cools really, 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 really well. The downside is it's much more difficult to clean off and much more difficult to apply. So I would say you should definitely think twice if you're gonna try and replace the liquid metal. And I would also say, except for in some sort of extreme circumstance, there's no need to ever replace the liquid metal. At some point, I will probably try replacing the liquid metal with thermal paste, but that's another video. Let's remove the two screws in this bottom plate so we can take a look at the power supply. Okay, so there's a few more than two screws. <laughs> and with all those screws removed, we should be able to pull out this bottom plate and the heat sink. And there we go. Now I do want to separate the metal plate from the heat sink so we can take a closer look at that heat sink. And Sony has hidden a screw right under there. So in order to remove this metal plate, we have to remove that screw. Then we can look at the heat sink. And there we go. So here is the massive heat sink in the PS5. There are all the fins and heat pipes. And this is just all one massive hunk of copper. Now let's take a look at the power supply. I do have to say that I'm already seeing some pretty massive repairability problems with the PS5. The main thing is that you have to tear down basically the entire console to get to that heat sink. Heat sinks on game consoles oftentimes get plugged, especially if they're placed on the floor. And so in order to clean out that heat sink, you would just have to remove basically every piece of the PS5, except for the power supply. Speaking of the power supply, that's the other problem. If this power supply ever goes bad, then you have to remove literally everything out of the PS5 in order to get to it. Let's take a look at the inside of it. And with all of these clips along the edges pried open, we can finally get a look at the power supply. I do need to say, don't mess with power supplies. All of these capacitors can give you a pretty good size shock and it's just not worth it. So leave that to a professional. Don't try this part at home. This power supply actually looks very similar to the PS4 power supplies. It's got very similar control chips. And the top side also looks pretty similar other than the shape. So just for fun, and yes, this is what people like me do for fun. Just for fun, I put the motherboard back in and put the clamp back on. So then I can take it back off and look at that liquid metal again. And just so I can see how it looks after I remove the motherboard, put it back on and then remove it again. And here we go. And it actually all looks fine. You can see there's a little bit more over on this edge, but most of it is located right on the chip. So it looks like removing the motherboard and then putting it back on with the liquid metal will work just fine. And here's a look at the HDMI system on the PS5. We've got the HDMI port right here. This port looks very similar to the previous ports on the PS4s. And then we have the HDMI encoder right here. This commonly goes bad on the PS4, so that's another possible point of failure. Then over here, we have the SIE chip. And then of course we have the soldered on solid state storage chips. We've got three on this side and three on the bottom side. And then we also have the Southbridge chip for the PS5. Unfortunately, Sony went with the soldered on storage instead of the removable SSD we saw on the Xbox Series X and Series S. Removable SSDs are a win for repairability as soldered on chips are much more difficult to replace and generally not doable for the average DIYer. Really the only thing left that is removable out of this PS5 is this outside piece right here that has the power and eject buttons down over here it's got the front USB and USB-C ports here. We've got the LED light over here, and it just snaps off. There's also a Wi-Fi antenna over here, and this is the inside of it. It's nice that all of these boards are removable and separately replaceable. I've got to say that this PS5 might be the least repairable console between the Xbox Series X, the Xbox Series S, and the PS5 with the disk drive. I'll be taking apart the PS5 Digital Edition once I get my hands on one, so you might want to subscribe so you can see that. Don't forget to go to ifixit.com slash tronicsix if you want $10 off your order of $50 more, and iFixit's having the best sale of the year right now. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good one.